So recently I had someone write to me and say, Jennifer, my daughter is extremely hypermobile and she also has really bad posture. Is there any correlation between hypermobility and bad posture? And the short answer for that is yes, there is. I see a lot of people with hypermobility, as you know, and those people often have really poor posture as well. And along with that goes very frustrated parents and dance teachers who are like, just stand up straight, why are you sliding into a puddle on the floor? So there's lots of scientific things that we could go into about that, but the thing that I wanna highlight is your body, as someone with hypermobility, has more options than most people's, right? So your joint, instead of just going to 90 degrees, goes further than 90 degrees. And that means that your body doesn't have an end range uh, the way that most people's does. So your body doesn't know where it is in space as much of the time. Um, studies have shown that people with hypermobility actually have poorer proprioception, which is your body's awareness of where it is in space. So when you have poorer proprioception and you can't tell where you are in space, it can be a little alarming. Um, think of it this way, when I was a child, I always wanted to um, stand near my mom in crowded places, in stores, theaters, wherever it was. I wanted to be near my mother. I wasn't sure who I was in the middle of this big crowd of strangers, and I wanted to be pressed up against my mother and feel her there at my back, and she gave me a sense of who I was and where I was. And your body wants that same sense. Your body wants to know where you are. So there's comfort in going to your end range for that. Does that make sense? So if you're standing and neutral posture for you means that you're not in the end range of any of your joints, that's a very uncomfortable stance, right? Just like if you're gonna go into, um, sorry about this, I know that's kind of gross, but this is the end range of my elbow, but I should keep it straight like this. So if I have it straight like this, I'm not really sure where that joint stops. If I go here, I know where that joint stops. I can feel it and that is comfortable for me. But I have to learn to be here, partly for ballet aesthetics and partly because it's safer for my body to learn how to function with that. But when I'm trying to work on posture, let's say we're talking about our lower back. If you have a really flexible lower back, it's comforting to hang into that lower back and feel that stop. It's comforting to hang into your hyperextension in your knees and to feel that end range motion. So we have to train our bodies to be comfortable with not really knowing where we are in space, right? It gets better. Um, there are, are a few different types of postures that are really common for people. So first of all, one I see a lot is kind of standing on one hip and falling into that, letting that hip feel nice and comfortable standing there. Another posture that you might see a lot is people kind of hang on their Y ligaments on the front of their hips and they kind of just hang into that. And you just see them sort of like thrust their pelvis forward, let that weight hang into it. And then you think, ah, good, I'm at the end here, this is holding me. Another one you might see, I don't have a huge amount of hyperextension in my knees, but locking your knees back and then sitting into your lower back. So if the knees lock back, the lower back kind of goes into it as well. You feel the knees go back behind, pelvis kind of comes forward. You can tip into that pelvis and sit into that lower back. You're going to slide into your shoulders if you have a lot of hypermobility in your shoulders because it's just easier. Yes, I think about it as a candle that started to melt a little bit. And so that wax starts to run and we have got to capture all of that loose connective tissue and all of that stretchy skin and pull it all back and teach it how to hold itself in place. So it's just like, Think about it like Star Wars, and you have to learn to use the force and sense what's around you. So you want to train your body to say, I'm in the middle of space, and I don't have an end range that I'm leaning into, but I'm going to be okay with that, and I'm going to feel the air around me, and I'm going to sense the air around me, and it's going to be fine. And five minutes later, you're going to be slumped in your favorite little whatever. Because if you're hypermobile, you could just keep slumping and slide on off onto the floor. You feel like there's nothing there to stop you until you hit your end range. So learning how to just be in yourself and be comfortable standing, even if it's not perfect, but just learn to be comfortable standing there. In a few seconds, I would start to slide into my favorite hip spot. My shoulders would be gone because I hate holding my shoulders in the socket. Wait, there they are. Okay, I have my shoulders in the socket. But if I weren't sitting here thinking about it, they would fall. This one's gonna come out, this one's gonna go, and I start to slide. But I remind myself, I stay there, 
I get bored with it, I forget about it, and I go. So yes, there is a connection between hypermobility and poor posture, and yes, there are certainly exercises you can do to correct each little thing of it, to work on strengthening your abs or strengthening your legs to hold your knees a certain way, strengthen your shoulder girdle, but the biggest thing you need to learn to do is to be comfortable in all of that empty space and teach your body that it's okay to be there and not press into its end range, all right? This has been a little bendy bit on hypermobility and posture. And if you liked it, follow us on YouTube. Make sure that you keep up with us so you never miss another one. Please send us your questions too. Let us know what you'd like to hear more about. Thanks.